Hey guys, welcome to this channel that is economics at a glance. So guys, this video meant to be the third lecture of the production economics, but as some of the students have requested to make a video or lecture on multiplier concept. So here it is guys for you. Okay, so today we will see what is the multiplier concept. Okay, so let's get this started guys. Okay, first introduction. In economics or macroeconomics, a multiplier is a factor of proportionality that measures how much an endogenous variable changes in response to a change in exogenous variable. Let me tell you, endogenous variable means dependent variable and exogenous variable is independent variable. So the change in independent variable what it affects to endogenous variable that measure is called a multiplier effect okay for example suppose variable x it changes by one unit which cause or causes another variable y to change by m units okay so change in one variable x that will cause change in m units in y that means the multiplier here is m okay so this is called multiplier. Well, the scientists behind the multiplier concept, the initial development, it is by F.A. Kahn, that is who gave employment multiplier. And uh, the, then afterwards, it got corrected and modified by Jane Keynes. And that multiplier concept given by Jane Keynes, it is income multiplier and investment multiplier, okay? So we will see what is this investment multiplier, see. It is the ratio of increase in income to increment in investment. Suppose you are increasing your investment, right? You are increasing your investment by two units or three units. So how much increase got occurred in your income? That is called investment multiplier. How much your income got increased due to increase in your investment? That is your investment multiplier, okay? So now, like, let's say, uh, let's say uh, today you are investing 200 rupees or 2,000 rupees, but uh, afterwards you started uh, investing 4,000, 5,000. So when you have increased 4,000 and 5,000 investing in that time or due to that investment, how much of your income got increased? That ratio is called investment multiplier. Okay, see, it is denoted by the letter that is K, okay, K is equals to change in Y divided by change in I, here Y is, see, change in income, and this change in I, that is change in investment, that means due to change in investment, how much change occurred in your income, okay, that is what called investment multiplier, Okay, this change in investment, we can write one, sorry, it, it, the whole multiplier, it can be written as one divided by one minus MPC. Well, what is this MPC? MPC stands for marginal propensity to consume. Okay, what it is, we will discuss later. Okay, so again, see, we can write this one as one divided by MPS. What is MPS? Marginal propensity to save. Or we can say here 1 minus MPC is equals to MPS. That means if we will subtract our marginal propensity to consume from 1, we can get marginal propensity to save. So it shows like MPS plus MPC is always 1. Our marginal propensity to consume plus marginal propensity to save is equals to one okay here another thing see always remember multiplier will be inversely proportional to mps see k is equals to one by mps so it clearly shows multiplier is inversely proportional to mps that is marginal propensity to save but it is directly proportional to mpc that is marginal propensity to consume why because one minus the bigger it will be, the after getting subtracted from one, it will be lesser. So the whole ratio will be higher against, okay? So we can say multiplier is inversely proportional to marginal propensity to save. 
and directly proportional to marginal propensity to consume got it okay see here our marginal mpc marginal propensity to consume well we will see the formula first what is the formula change in consumer spending divided by change in income if your income is changing how much change you have done in your spending or expenditure okay see marginal propensity to consume is the proportion of an increase in income that gets spent on consumption okay so this mpc varies by income level it is typically lower at higher incomes and this mpc it is the key determinant of keynes keynesian multiplier which describes the effect of increased investment or government spending as economic stimulus okay so here always remember with the higher and higher income your mpc got lower why because suppose to, today your income is only 20000 okay and suddenly you have got 50000 and the change in your income compared to that the change in your spending it cannot be very higher okay so your marginal propensity to consume will be lower and lower when your income got higher and higher next coming to marginal propensity to save it is equals to change in saving divided by change in disposable income disposable income means which is ready to Uh, like uh, you can those are ready for you to expenditure for expenditure okay marginal propensity to save it is the proportion of an increase in income that gets saved instead of the spent in consumption suppose your income has been increased but rather than spending you are saving more so how much extra you have saved when your income got changed that is called your marginal propensity to save but on contrary to mpc mps it is typically higher at higher incomes generally we have seen the more and more income we got we tend to save more not expanding more right so mps marginal propensity to save it is typically higher at higher income level then mps also it is determining the keynesian multiplier which describes the effect of increased investment or government spending as economic stimulus so here also it can, it is written mps is equals to 1 minus mpc that means mpc plus mps it will be always equals to 1 this is most important for the exam point of view like mpc plus mps is equals to 1 and that formula which i have discussed here that multiplier is equals to change in income divided by change in investment that can be written as 1 divided by 1 minus mpc or else we can write it as 1 divided by mps this thing is important to remember and another thing to remember is multiplier will be inversely proportional to mps saving and directly proportional to consume mpc okay now coming to multiplier effect it is the process by which any change in a component of aggregate demand it will result in a greater final change in the real gdp the size of the multiplier well it is determined by the size of leakages from the circular flow of income well we have circular flow of income three sector four sector multi sector two sector so any kind of leakages that will determine your size of multiplier let's assume the government has increased or it increases spending on education how by raising the wages of the teachers by 5 crore that is a injection okay so government has increased the income of the teachers so now what teacher will do teachers they will spend this money which in turn becomes the income of other people yes or no if you are spending something in any kind of commodity that will add the income to other people suppose you are purchasing a copy or notebook that is the income of the shopkeeper right so whenever you start spending the income of other people will go on increasing right so same thing here the proportion of income that goes towards the leakages is called 
marginal propensity to withdraw remember the proportion of your income that goes to this leakages which we have covered earlier that is your marginal propensity to withdraw let's assume half of the injection goes towards saving tax or import that means the mpw or that is marginal propensity to withdraw is 0.5 okay then the question arises what happens to actual gdp well we'll see that let's see let's say this square represents the initial increase in income of 5 crore by the teachers or that is a okay this is the total income of a now a will do some expenditure after getting the income c if the marginal propensity to withdraw is 0.5 that means half is saved half is spent okay so this is half is the total income of or sorry total income left for a that means it has been saved with a that is 50% another 50% is total expenditure by a and the expenditure is total income of b c i have told you if you are doing expenditure on the notebook you are expending but that is the income of the shopkeeper similarly a has done expenditure of 50% that 50% expenditure is the total income of b another person again so this is the total income of a what we have discussed and after 50% expenditure that 50% expenditure becomes the total income of b the total Fifth, uh, let's say five hundred rupees I have got. Okay, uh, out of that five hundred rupees, two fifty I have given to the shopkeeper. Okay, so two fifty will be the income of the shopkeeper. But total money given to me is five hundred. So my income five hundred, shopkeeper's income two fifty. Totally, it becomes seven fifty income now. So my point is how this investment is multiplying the income. Okay, now this is. the total income of both a and b a income is the square okay and this triangle which is the 50% expenditure by a becomes the income of b this is the total income now now half of the income after getting income b is also expanding okay 50% we have known uh, mpw marginal propensity to withdraw is 0.5 or 50% so this is uh, the total expenditure the 50% of this triangle which is the total expenditure of b or total income of c another person again and this is the total saving of b now we have this is the total income of c and total saving of b now we know that uh, earlier the square is total income of a then from that this triangle came this is total income of b again that 50% will be total income of c see initially we have got this income but after investing this has got multiplied and multiplied again c will do expenditure that will be the income of d okay so this is the way how if we will go on increasing our investment the income will also going on increasing by m unit that that's why it is called multiplier okay so this is the concept of multiplier now we will see the types of multiplier different types of multiplier well we have uh, discussed one formula to get multiplier that is k equals to 1 divided by 1 minus mpc that is equals to 1 divided by mps okay now we will see government multiplier well government multiplier this is change in income divided by change in government expenditure that is also 1 divided by 1 minus mpc well this change in y that will be 1 divided by 1 minus mpc into change in the government expenditure again we can say the same thing so here we can say the investment multiplier is also same with the government multiplier this is a important question that the investment multiplier is exactly equal to the government multiplier the same formula and the same way to calculate next thing is transfer payment multiplier how to know that how to get this transfer payment multiplier well let me tell you one trick you only need to know what is the formula of investment multiplier if you know what is investment multiplier how you can derive others see government multiplier you have known the same as investment multiplier 
Next is transfer payment multiplier. Here, what you need to do, you have to simply multiply the MPC with investment multiplier. See, it is MPC times the government or investment multiplier. One divided by one minus MPC, we have already our investment multiplier. We have to multiply MPC only. And that will show MPC divided by MPS. Why divided by MPS? This one divided by one minus MPC that we can also write one divided by MPS, right? So MPC into one divided by MPS, that is MPC divided by MPS. Okay, this is called transfer payment multiplier. So here the note is we have to multiply MPC to the investment multiplier. Next is tax multiplier, similar thing. There you have to multiply only MPC. Here you have to multiply minus MPC. Same thing, minus MPC divided by MPS. Okay, next coming to foreign trade multiplier. Foreign trade multiplier, it is a different formula. You have to remember this. One divided by one minus B plus M. Here B is marginal propensity to consume. That is your MPC plus M is equals to marginal propensity to import in foreign trade multiplier you can get question like suppose the b value is given m value is given and you are told to find out the value of ftm that is foreign trade multiplier so simply by putting the formula you can get your answer okay next is super multiplier well super multiplier it is a combined effect of multiplier and accelerator so always remember multiplier plus accelerator, it will give rise to super multiplier. This is an average effect, okay? Higher propensity to consume, it is directly proportional to higher the multiplier. We have told you like uh, the multiplier is directly proportional to MPC, right? So this is the same thing, higher the propensity to consume, higher will be the multiplier. Well, another important question for the competitive exam, the range of multiplier, it is always one to infinity. Okay, remember the range of multiplier is one to infinity. Next, the last one, that is unit multiplier and balanced budget multiplier. Well, it is same, both are same. Unit multi, always the balanced budget multiplier is one. That's why it is called unit multiplier. Well, see, government expenditure, what government has done the expenditure plus tax revenue, what government has got to the taxes, that equals to one. If you will add both this figure, it will be one. Okay. In case of balanced budget multiplier, government expenditure is always equals to tax revenue. That's why the name is balanced. Okay. So balanced budget multiplier value is always one. That is why it is called unit multiplier. Remember, balanced budget multiplier means it will be unit, that is one. So balanced budget multiplier, see, it is government expenditure plus tax revenue. Your government expenditure is one divided by one minus B, as we have uh, told you, one divided by one minus MPC. Then tax revenue, tax multiplier, that is minus MPC divided by one minus MPC. So minus B divided by one minus B. If you will solve this, it will come one only. See here, one only it came. That's why balanced budget multiplier is always a unit multiplier, okay? So this is all about your multiplier concept. Soon again, we will come with as usual our third video, third lecture of production economics. Till then, stay with my channel and don't forget to like and subscribe my channel. Thank you guys.